Look at this adorable sign that I made. What if I told you that this was a beginner build and you can easily make one? Still don't believe me? All right, let me walk you through the steps that I took on this so that you can go and make your own. I headed down to the local hardware store and found some inexpensive wood rounds. These are 17 and 3 quarters inches. I like to go over these with 180 grit sandpaper to get any uneven spots and to remove any excess glue which will interfere with the stain. I then follow up with 220 grit to smooth it all out. Since the edges are already finished with a router, I make sure not to sand them. I tried something new with the stain this time, using a piece of microfiber cloth to rub in the stain. This was a little messier than a brush, but did a great job giving me an even coat and not too much stain on any one spot. These rounds are made up of multiple boards that have been glued together. You can see here where they line up. I was able to use this line and one lower to make a five and three quarter inch stripe in the middle. I wanted a white area in the middle of this sign, so I used tape to mark off the area. In the past, I've had issues with paint seeping through and not getting that crisp line. So I tried out this new tape that claims it's the only tape with paint blocking technology. So let's put it to the test. I prefer to use chalk paint on my signs since it's thicker and doesn't seem to get under the tape as much as regular paint. It also dries quick and has a nice full coverage finish. To apply it, I used a small foam roller. I made sure to not put any pressure on the roller. This is really important because the pressure can push that paint right under the tape. I do one light coat over the top and the sides. Using a hairdryer on cool, I dried the paint. Then I put on a second coat. Time to take off the tape and see if it lived up to its high price tag. It sure did. Look at that clean, crisp line. I will definitely be using this again. In case you want to make a sign just like this, I'm going to walk you through where I got my fonts. I used 1001 free fonts and found that I liked Melanie Dry Brush and DIN Alternate. Although not shown, I added them to my computer's fonts. I'll be using my Cricut, so I opened the software and typed my text. To change the font, you just click on font. It will open with the Cricut fonts chosen, so if you try to search for the font and it isn't there, you may need to click on System Fonts. I really like this font, but it did have one flaw. It wasn't solid. So when it was going to cut it out on my vinyl, it would have cutouts in all of those white areas, which wasn't what I wanted. I'm gonna walk you through the steps that I took to fix this. Remember, you do not need to do all this. You could easily choose a different font. To fix this, I changed the color to black and I took a screenshot of it. Then I opened up Photoshop and using a brush tool, I filled in those areas with black. I uploaded the image into my Cricut project and I added the word the and family. I played around with the sizing until I liked it and then I cut my vinyl. 
In the past, I have used the other part of my vinyl as a stencil and painted on the letters. This time, I chose to use the vinyl letters. Either way will work. This was easier and I didn't run the risk of ruining my whole project with a bad paint job. I will link everything that I used in the description, just in case you want to make one yourself. You may have noticed that the stripe is not in the middle. This was on purpose. I left the top area larger since I would be adding a bow and greenery. Every sign should have a finish coat over it, whether you're going to be keeping the side inside or outside. It will just keep it fresh looking and make it easier to clean. So choose the finish of your choice. I decided to go with Mod Podge since it was low fumes and I could use it in the house. It's a great beginner product as it's not hard to use. I put it on with a brush. It goes on white but dries clear. After it was completely dry, I put on a second coat. On the back, I measured out and I put two hooks in. I tied some rope onto the hooks using some super glue just to make sure that those knots didn't loosen up over time. The rope gives the sign a bit of a rustic and shanty chic vibe. I am going to show you the easiest way to make a bow. I used two and a half inch wire ribbon. With a ruler, I measured 12 inches and cut it. This is going to be the tail pieces. Next, leaving a small one inch tail, I measured five inches for a bow on one side then, while holding it in place, I flipped the ribbon over and measured 5 inches for a bow on the other side. I then repeated this two more times, giving me four bows total. I used a black zip tie to hold it all in place. Make sure to put the tail in place before the zip tie. I didn't, so it was a bit of a struggle getting that tail piece in. You also want to leave the zip tie loose as you'll be adding in the greenery. I cut the tails together just so that they would be even. I may need to go back and make them a little shorter in the end if they go over where my writing is. For the greenery, you can add anything that you want. I was at Target, so I picked mine up there. I put the stems in the twist tie and played around with them just a bit. Once I was happy with it, I tightened the twist tie down and cut off the excess. I chose to use some Velcro mounting tape. That way the bow can be easily replaced if it gets dirty or if my friend just wants to have a different look for her sign. And here it is all finished. I'm really happy with how it turned out and now I get to go give it to my friend.